Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rose From Off The Cuff. We have another exciting review for you from a channel favorite, Watches By Nick. Now this particular watch is actually branded under his Orion line. This is actually a prototype for the Calamity Diver that is upcoming for release. Um, this one honestly has really been a pleasure to kind of watch and, and see how everything grows and has changed. Um, and I'm really excited to see what uh, comes out of the production model because I'm that impressed with this particular prototype. Now a little bit about watches by Nick and the Orion brand. Essentially Nick Harris, he started out doing watch mods, uh, mainly Seiko based and then he basically, you know, as his talents developed, he started thinking, hey, you know, um, I'm going to go to watchmaking school, I'm going to do the whole nine yards, and I'm going to start my own unique brand. So he's definitely done that, and, um, you know, he's created a real cool design aesthetic of his own and is really moving his pieces uh, up market. And this is kind of their first offering into that uh, more refined space there. Um, really departing from the Seiko mod style. So this is of course is a dive watch um, and some key common characteristics and design language you're gonna look for when you're trying to look, uh, trying to find a dive watches. You're gonna want something that's of course water resistant through normally some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something tough, legible with a dive time bezel and or a diver's extension as well if it's on bracelet. Um, so this is the Orion Calamity and uh, there will be a couple of changes uh, to the production model, which are gonna include things like a polished case back, some uh, Geneva striping on the rotor, and a different type of branding that's gonna just look a little bit nicer. Uh, basically, everything is gonna look a bit nicer and more refined, um, but there will also will be larger uh, bevels on the bracelet. There will be an included diver's extension, uh, which looked really nice and milled out from what I've seen. Uh, there will also be a cleaner bezel, uh, execution as well as the smoother operation on it which honestly from this prototype the bezel operation is actually pretty nice as is so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing this package all tightened up and ready to go but I'm also still very excited to bring to you this kind of uh, overview and preview of this awesome watch so let's go ahead and get a closer look okay so as you can see Really, really nice piece. Loving the color palette here that he used and the finishing uh, using the, uh, the matte ceramic insert and whatnot. But uh, general overview, this uh, watch is priced out uh, at $1,495 with a pre-order price of $1,400. Now, um, I know for a small independent brand, especially one that's not Swiss made, you're probably thinking that is a bit high. Um, and honestly, this is definitely outside of the norm, but you know what? The execution, the design, and, and really the ethos of the brand is also above the norm. So um, I think that it does still carry quite a bit of value, especially when you really uh, put it against some contemporaries that are out there. Uh, that I think are quite comparable, but this thing really just kind of knocks their socks off. Uh, so of course this does have that magic um, diameter of 40 millimeters. It has an 11.3 millimeter height. It actually is thinner at certain points because as you can see it does uh, have a, a curved back here. And then also because the sapphire, as you can see, although it is quite almost invisible there, is actually uh, double domed, which is nice. But uh, this case back, because it does taper in and then out and around, because it does also have a curved window here for the display, um, it actually does get thinner, but I mean, basically at its thickest point, it's still uh, extremely thin. Um, you know, if you've ever seen one of these types of clasps before or you know, the, the links on a basic three link oyster, you kind of can tell just by uh, the scale how thin this watch actually is. And it also does have little tricks, of course, to make it wear even thinner and appear even thinner um, in design and execution, which we'll get into a little bit more detail as we cover this piece here. So another couple of, uh, 
items is, is this is of course made out of stainless steel it has a brushed and polished finish it does have that beautiful double dome sapphire so it does since it's double domed instead of single domed there's no distortion really when you're looking at it at angle which is really nice as you can see still quite readable and very legible and it also has the AR coating so although you're gonna see some reflections from my studio lights uh, out in practice out in the real world this thing is actually gonna be really really nice and you're gonna feel like you can reach right through that uh, sapphire and touch the dial so the bezel is actually 120 clicks and it's unidirectional rotating bezel Even in these gloves, no problem turning it. And that is a really thin profile. So I mean, you know, as far as grip goes, you wanna make sure that the grip that's on there is usable grip. And uh, I think that's really great that they've maximized uh, the, the function while minimalizing the form. So everything is just so tightly compacted on this watch um, to really maintain that very svelte and thin case profile. Now the uh, ceramic insert as you can see is a matte finished and it's actually fully loomed and of course this is a production prototype so this is pre-production and the production models will vary slightly it'll have you know um, sharper execution and whatnot and then also the loom will be protected uh, with a coating versus right now uh, I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up but it may seem uh, appear to be a slightly patinaed compared to what's on the dial but um, basically the production models will take care of all of that but I think you kind of can get the idea of how this is gonna look already just by checking it out in the video and then of course the various pictures that have been posted online. Now one thing that I absolutely love about this watch is this screw down crown. Now this is actually a carryover um, style crown um, that I really, really loved when it came to his previous model which was just known as kind of the Orion One. Now that watch uh, was more of a field watch and kind of a general everyday watch but man I loved the crown on it and the nice thing was I mean that thing was powered by an NH35 this is powered by a Swiss uh, ETA 2892 which is a whole nother level up and um, man it just adds to that winding action and that tactile feel and kind of interaction with it this is just a, such a great big crown the knurling is absolutely a pleasure to use and look at the tolerances on those crown guards I mean there is not any daylight slipping through there so really impressive how tightly those butt up together and uh, really don't get in the way when you are winding or screwing or unscrewing the crown itself now the movement as we mentioned is um, a genuine ETA 2892 uh, this particular model um, of course is a pre-production it has this kind of the light etching and then as I mentioned uh, before the the actual uh, production models can be quite a bit more dressed up uh, I believe it will be top grade uh, so that will be even nicer and then of course as uh, some of you aficionados might know uh, the higher the grade pretty much the better regulated and better tolerances for everything and if you don't know the uh, basically the 2892 is the successor really to the uh, 2824 um, it's just a m more modern more advanced slimmer uh, movement super thin which is really what enables this watch to be so thin and still have 200 meters water resistance and also still have a display case back so that's just how much room they have to work with that which is really really nice now the case back is beautifully curved as you might notice let me try to get that in focus so it has a nice wrap basically where it's gonna sit very nicely on your wrist and it's not gonna move which is great so even if you wear your bracelet a bit uh, looser than than most people like I know for me I probably wear my bracelet a couple of notches looser than most people would wear because um, I do wear it a little bit lower on the wrist the nice thing is this will still sit 
so comfortably and just so securely on your wrist. You don't have to worry about uh, it being jarred or moving or, you know, wrapping around the other side. So really, really nice. And I mean, I, I thought, you know, visually it was tough to tell what a difference it would make, but when you actually have it on your wrist, I think it becomes pretty apparent uh, just the kind of thoughtful design that went into that feature. That's just really, really an awesome uh, design uh, piece to what what is already uh, kind of an amalgamation of so many awesome uh, design points. So taking a look at the uh, the dial and, and the hands and whatnot, of course we do have applied indices all around, really great, great size, extremely legible. I like that they are pushed out uh, to the edges of the dial, which does op keep the dial face feeling really open. So although this is a 40 millimeter watch, visually it still has great presence. And then it kind of has the uh, half a minute or a half second markers that track that goes all the way all the way around the outside is really nice and uh, also adds a bit of dimension as you can see so it, although it is an open dial it doesn't feel super stark by any means it definitely has a really well balanced design now the hands are extremely unique and as you can see they are fully polished with painted bases, which is really nice. It, it does offer a bit of a uh, kind of floating look. And, and at the same time, it, it keeps the it keeps that center portion of the dial looking very uncluttered. And um, it, it actually helps you focus on that awesome uh, orange accent seconds hand and, and the way that it kind of floats around the dial. Just really, really beautifully done. The water resistance, as you can see, is 666 feet, which is about 200 meters. Um, very impressive. We have the lugs here, which are 20 millimeters, super classic. Um, they are, of course, solid. As you can see, everything is just super solid on here. It has a 20 millimeter uh, bracelet that does taper down to 18 millimeters. Um, everything solid, like I mentioned. The connecting system is pin and collar, um, and that's something that I did ask if that was going to stay for the production model, and uh, Nick actually did confirm that he is sticking with the pin and collar system uh, simply because of the availability for the thinness uh, to have here and, and the kind of the sturdy build on the link. Uh, versus trying to cram in either a weaker screw in there or make the links any bulkier. So, um, of course, I'm not the hugest fan of pin and collar, but you know what? It's definitely a step above your standard kind of directional friction pin. So um, I'm, I'm not mad at that at all, especially considering the quality of this bracelet and the feel of it. And it's only gonna get nicer. Of course, this one is has been uh, through the rotation there, as you can see. It definitely has some wear marks on it. So this thing has kind of uh, made its rounds uh, throughout uh, Instagram and and um, and other review platforms and outlets. So this is by no means you know a a perfect uh, look at what a new model will look like. But as you can see, nicely milled clasp, all the great micro adjustments, so you can get really the perfect fit. Uh, so yeah, really just super impressed with this piece. I mean the thinness alone. The profile, of course, the color palette is just outstanding. I do prefer watches to kind of have that uh, darker shade of blue because honestly, once you're out in the sun, this thing is really gonna light up and uh, be a nice bright shade as well. So I think it's nice to kind of have that multifaceted balance there. You don't want something that's just overly um, bright because it's only going to just look more saturated and flat. Uh, this actually does have quite a bit of dimension even with just the uh, that kind of satin matte finishing uh, that's that uh, all the blue is finished in. So let's go ahead and get this on the wrist. All right, as you can see, wears just beautifully on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Um, the proportions are just magnificent. Then you take a look here just wraps nicely sits nice and flat really nice i you know personally i might prefer if uh, it had slightly 
a more drastic taper on the bracelet instead of going from uh, 18, oh, I'm sorry, 20 to 18, maybe down to a 16. Um, but that's really being nitpicky. I'm sure there's some people who wouldn't be happy with that um, and, and like this just the way it is. I just feel like with the uh, beautiful lines here, as you can see, look at that bevel, that 360 bevel that wraps all the way around from the top to the bottom. Never really seen that detail done before, but man, that thing is gorgeous. And it really even makes that mid case that much thinner in appearance. As you can see, because of the reflections and the cutaways, it, it, I mean, it kind of lets you view that mid case as almost just being there floating and then also appearing thinner. So, I mean, that thing looks like it's probably, well, like if you were to take uh, some quarters out and lay them on top of each other, it'd probably be no more than three of those laid out. I mean, just gorgeous. And then, of course, everything is smooth and tapers. You see how the, uh, the bezel, that slight slope there on the insert just flows right into that beautiful sapphire. Everything just flows. The design here really feel like Nick knocked it out of the park. And as you can see, when I get a little bit more scale, you can understand that on, you know, my hand open and my arm, this thing wears really nice. Even up close, it doesn't really, of course, it's going to look a bit more distorted uh, due to the lens and everything and seem like it's a lot bigger kind of on a wristy. But then when you get a little bit more space, you can see that this thing just wears you know just about as perfect as a 40 millimeter watch uh, should so really really nice from that standpoint um so i mean on the wrist this thing just it's just super thin you know it wraps around and it gives you that really nice secure feel um it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere so really great i don't do want to try to get as many shots and angles to really let you know how flat this lays i mean i wouldn't be afraid to put a cuff over this shirt at all i'm sorry <laughs> over this watch a shirt cuff over the watch because it definitely would just sweep right over and flow this thing just wears super nice and super thin and i know that's something that you know the dive watch crowd has been looking for i think uh, a big tall thick divers really the standard and uh there's plenty of people that almost avoid diver watches just because of the thickness um that's normally associated with getting that uh that good water protection so um let's go ahead and take a look at the loom okay so uh let's go ahead and get this loom shot going get the lights as you can see that bgw9 is glowing just super nicely and then as a reminder this is a pre-production model so this prototype is you know it's been a little bit worn a little bit patinaed a little bit dirtied up so i mean that uh that outer um ceramic insert i think is going to be lit up a lot better on the production model definitely looking forward to checking that out so let's go ahead and transition into some low light transition shots because although these hot studio lights do a great job of letting you know what the watch will look like out on a sunny day um, I think that's not where most people spend their time. So if you are coming in and out of a building, getting in and out of your car, this is going to be really the blue tone that you're going to be seeing and living with. And the nice thing is that you do get a nice look at the consistency in the finishes. Now, of course, this is going to have a couple of blemishes from wear and tear on it. Uh, especially since it's made the rounds quite a bit with uh, various people. Um, you can still see the consistency in that finish and the beauty in the finish. Just really, really nice. So super impressed with this piece here. My hat's off to Nick. I think he's really doing some great, great stuff. Hit the lights. So while that, uh, well, my camera kind of readjusts its uh, tone there, um, I guess we can get into some closing thoughts. Again, on the wrist, infinitely comfortable. Um, 
super nice, great uh, sporty still feeling to it. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the color palette. It's just a fun color scheme and, and, and really great color play on there. Everything comes together beautifully. The finishing from the matte finishes um, really makes it nice and sporty, but then those beautiful bevels um, add a nice touch of class. So that's really great. As far as model variants go, there's a black dial model, which has a glossy uh, black ceramic insert. And then there's a green dial model, which is essentially matted just like this one. Now that green dial is something very, very unique and has already developed quite a big following. So I, I'm really happy to see some of these more interesting colorways get out there, especially as kind of a main choice. Um, I think, you know, you think someone's going to release three models of a new watch line. Normally, there's not going to be a green dial option. Uh, it's going to be for divers. It'll be probably an orange dial or a yellow dial or something like that. Um, different types of sunburst dials. So I think this one, they really nailed it. I think Nick, um, this has really been a labor of love for him. Uh, you know, he's kept various people involved and, and, you know, people who follow the forums and the uh, different Facebook groups and whatnot. I've kind of all been able to see this uh, develop and I think we've all been really excited to see this thing in the flesh, in the metal, and I'm just super impressed and super happy that it's made it this far and really it's it's well on its way to, uh, you know, its full production run, which I'm excited to see and I believe uh, in August time frame. So uh, the nice thing is also that as far as variants go, depending on the success of this initial run, you know, Nick actually has plans to release a ton of other awesome variants. And I don't mean basic stuff with just like different dials and whatnot. Um, I mean, straight up other variants, I mean, a smooth bezeled option. Um, of course, then all the different color play options. Um, and then even something as small as offering, you know, different bezel inserts for people to swap out, you know, kind of tying back to those Seiko mod days. Um, he definitely has plans to really accommodate to you guys and bring you something that's very personal and, um, you know, that, uh, that you can really make your own. And I think that's really an awesome uh, trait. And I think that this is a great canvas uh, for people. Of course, a 20 millimeter uh, lug width, you can just put it on any type of strap, really. It's gonna be a, a strap monster. It's super thin, super wearable. So um, really, really great. Some comparable models, I'd say, um, it does compare pretty closely as far as kind of in the price range and uh, in scale, you could say maybe to something like a, an Oris Diver 65, but I think this thing outspecs it in pretty much every way um, with, through water resistance, uh, the grade of movement, all of that. The only thing that it doesn't, um, I'd say, outdo the Oris in is going to be the prestige in the name. And honestly, Oris, Oris is very popular, but I wouldn't call them prestigious in any way. Um, and I love Oris, um, so it's not a knock against them. I'm just saying it's not like it's hot horology. It doesn't carry, you know, the same uh, name recognition that even an Omega or, um, of course, a Rolex would have. So I think it, there's there's still that trade off there where you know you are buying an Oris, uh, you're you're buying most of the bits going to the watch, but you are paying a little bit for the name. I think here uh, in the Orion line, you're really buying an awesome watch um, and that you're buying a timepiece that stands alone on its own two feet. Um, some other comparables would be something uh, uh, more upstream like the Omega SMP. Uh, you know, honestly, again, very similar specs wise, um, even the movements uh, because the uh, ceramic SMPs uh, basically they have like 2892s, but you know, modified and, and, and even to a point where you don't even call it 2092 anymore because it's the beat rates a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be seven ticks, uh, versus eight ticks and you're going to get a little bit extended play there. Um, on the, um, uh, on the, uh, power reserve, sorry. And, um, so, I mean, those are great watches. People love them. Some people hate them. Me personally, I am a fan and can appreciate the value proposition. Um, but as far as design aesthetic goes, I'm not a huge fan of the SMP, but it does have 
you know, nice thinness, nice solid bracelet, great, you know, shade of blue, whatnot. Um, and I think this is pretty comparable as far as that goes. Um, you know, as far as on the independent side, I think the Orion fits uh, somewhere probably between, you know, the OWC mill subs and, and Monta's Ocean King uh, as kind of being on two different ends of the spectrum. Uh, the Monta being, you know, all about Swiss uh, precision and, and, and that whole side of it. But from, you know, Nick's perspective, you know, as a watchmaker, he's just a quality. He doesn't care where it comes from. Um, so that, that's really a refreshing take. So, I mean, although he could easily probably have this meet Swiss specifications to be Swiss made, you know, he doesn't really see the value add and he um, is really wanting to watch the stand on its own two feet, which is a very similar uh, mantra to something like, um, you know, the OWC mill subs, uh, very similar as far as, you know, it, it, it offers uh, a nice thin updated movement in the Soprod uh, A10 which also is kind of considered a uh, an alternative. I wouldn't say it's a clone uh, as much, um, but it's definitely an alternative um, to the ETA 2892. So, you know, I, again, and that's really great company to be in. I mean, Monto, you know how I feel about them. Great watch brand, great watches. And I think honestly, this watch the uh, from Orion really could, you know, slide in well to a, a another you know into a collection next to a Monta ocean king or you know um an owc mill sub because i think although they they kind of fit a similar niche uh they're all still completely different uh design wise and and the aesthetic is something totally different although they're just you know they're all these kind of smaller brands that are creating something very unique for the market and that's why i really do like to support micro brands because they do offer you know, things that they know aren't going to be just hits. They offer you something a little more polarizing, uh, a little bit more courageous, a little bit more daring when it comes to design and execution. So I think that's just great. And um, that's why uh, they're some of my favorite watches. And honestly, you compare them to watches in this price range, some of those mid-tier watches, I mean, are you really getting that much more brand recognition? Um, yeah, everybody knows Oris and Longines and, and Tag and whatnot, but um, I, I think uh, kind of your watch buddies aren't gonna be very impressed with that anyway. That's kind of for non-watch people. Um, it's nice when they kind of recognize the brand, but I think any watch guy who knows anything about uh, Nick Harris and um, you know the, the watches that he puts out um, is going to be infinitely impressed that you're wearing a calamity. So, and they're definitely going to want to check it out and get it on wrist. So, um, you know, the bottom line is that I really love where the Orion brand is going and the calamity diver really walks the walk. Um, you know, there's a lot of brands out there that I think, uh, do capitalize on great marketing. Uh, some fashion brands, you know, like they, sell hundred they sell more than Swiss watches it's it's nuts right and they're just this, these um, just really well branded timepieces and and they just get pushed and marketed uh, a certain way and they um, they're all over social media and um, you know it's just like a $30 quartz watch that's being sold for $250 um, I feel like this is kind of uh, why we have to support these uh, smaller brands because they're kind of the absolute opposite of that. It's not about uh, the great branding and the great marketing. It's really about um, great timepieces. And as a huge fan of diver watches and <laughs> blue divers at that, if you guys know uh, my channel at all, um, I think really um, the team uh, over there has really knocked it out of the park. So. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.